They have long been favorites with investors, but of late, real estate investment trusts, or REITs, have come under pressure. They're seeing lower distributable income on the back of rising finance costs. And share prices have plummeted since interest rates started rising in 2022. If you look on a price to book basis, they are no longer trading at premium to book. In fact, they are trading at discount to book at around 0.8 times uh, to its book. So in certain sense, we felt that at least, you know, there are attraction in terms of valuation. Share prices of Singapore REITs or S REITs touched their 52-week lows this month. S REITs are seeing dips in their distribution per unit or DPU. It's the dividend per share that REITs pay out. But despite the downtrend, analysts say S REITs remain a safe haven. In this environment, I will prefer the domestic names. Um, we don't want you know, other additional headwinds of um, say FX or you know uh, uh, in the challenges in terms of their asset values uh, there will definitely be an opportunity for offshore names or you know REITs with overseas assets to come through but I think we need to get a stabilization of those two factors the FX as well as asset values till then I think uh, you know domestic names probably are a bit more I would tend to think more safe events uh, versus other names. Analysts say REITs in the industrial and hospitality sectors remain resilient. Certain retail and healthcare REITs are also holding up. Hospitality sector stands out uh, in terms of the growth estimates and that was because I think they had a very uh, low bar to start with after coming out from the pandemic and uh, the recovery has not yet fully happened. Industrial REITs, uh, especially those uh, associated with logistics, because at the end of the day, e-commerce growth is still, uh, still resilient, and therefore there will still be demand for logistics for warehouse. Uh, data centers is also another area where the, the demand remains fairly resilient. And, and lastly, in retail REITs, where especially for Singapore, is that we find those retail REITs in suburban malls uh, continue to be fairly resilient as well because these are, I would say, non-discretionary spendings like your supermarkets. You know, the, the traffic, you know, f for some of these suburban malls remains to be fairly uh, elevated and strong. Healthcare REITs are usually resilient as well because uh, they own hospitals or nursing homes and you know, Asia has an aging population. So you see continued demand for these assets as well. The most reliable REITs have a track record for paying and increasing their dividends. And they're usually backed by a strong sponsor, a parent or majority unit holder of the trust. We can rely on those well-managed REITs that have a long track record of increasing their distribution per unit or DPU. So then what you're looking for are REITs that have, for example, acquired over the years and boosted their asset base as well as their DPU. REITs who are also active in capital recycling. In this case, capital recycling refers to REITs that sell non-performing assets and buy better performing assets so as to refresh their portfolio and um, basically improve the yield on their portfolio. So I think if you choose such REITs, they're still able to mitigate some of the decline in their distributable income that arises from higher interest rates. And of course, you have to look for REITs with good sponsors as well. Uh, those good sponsors can actually provide not just the pipeline of assets that the REIT can acquire, but they're also able to provide financial support in case the REIT gets in trouble. Maple Tree itself is a very good sponsor because it's Artemasic owned. So you can look at like Maple Tree Industrial or Maple Tree Logistics. Then for Capital Land Investment Limited, it's also a very good sponsor because they are a very large real estate company. Opportunities remain in the REIT market, but investors must consider the risks particularly in an environment of high interest rates and inflation. See what we are seeing for a lot of the REITs are uh, headwinds such as higher utility costs and staff costs. Because of high inflation uh, globally as well as Singapore, REITs have to contend with higher um, utility costs, which is the electricity and, and water costs. 
uh, for the buildings that they own. Uh, another headwind will be weak in, uh, exchange rates. So for example, REITs that have overseas properties, it could be for example in Korea, in Japan or in Europe. The strong Singapore dollar actually means that when they convert uh, the rental income in these currencies back to Singapore dollar, they actually uh, suffer exchange losses. So we are seeing that affecting the REITs distributable income as well. And of course, uh, a third thing that REITs have to look out for is the valuation of their properties. Uh, the valuation of the properties could decline because um, what real estate consultancies use is higher interest rates uh, to actually calculate um, the valuation of these properties. So when interest rates go up, your um, valuation actually comes down. In a high interest rate environment, the ability to make acquisition you know, of assets that are even higher yielding than your dividend is therefore remains a challenge. And therefore, those REITs will have to rely on inorganic growth. You know, the ability to further increase rental income. You know, rental reversion during this environment will be actually, I would say, you know, will give you also very low opportunity. You know, because overall economic backdrop is not that strong given the overall high interest rate environment. So investors that are going for bargain hunting has to be aware of this risk is that all this dividend may have to be adjusted downwards because of financing costs, because of revaluation losses due to higher cap rate expansion. Analysts say dividends may decline as share prices continue to be under pressure and due diligence and a calculated approach are critical for investors who are shopping for REITs. There will be tactical opportunities, uh, but you need to be careful about them. For the more patient money, I think you need to have a long-term view of what the sector is, uh, need to wait for the DPUs and NAVs to stabilize before putting in uh, substantial capital to allocate into the, cap into the sector. Don't uh, go all in when you're purchasing a REIT. Because even though REITs have come down a lot, um, they may actually go down further in the near term because of pessimism. So what you can do is to pace your purchases. So maybe you put a little bit of your money in right now. If it drops further, at least you will have available cash to invest more. Okay? But if you go all in right now and it drops further, you can only watch helplessly, but you cannot actually participate uh, by purchasing more shares.